You read, Peter. I read. I read a lot. Yeah. I've read too. I read. Read. I, I read. I listen. Yeah, you listen. You don't. Yeah, read. you. It's not the same. You watch. Oh, I read. All right, guys. Well, thank you, Steve. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And Gonzo, thank you. Yeah. See you next week, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Very good, Matt. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. See you mm-hmm. April thirtieth. April thirtieth. April thirtieth. Yeah. We'll see. It's a small not. ceremony. I'm not at the ceremony. <laughs> That's a good All right. Well, have a great weekend, everybody. Yeah. Made it through the week. Polish up those roller skates. We will uh, see you on Sunday. Come on up. Uh, I know Matt uh, Gonzo, maybe come on up to uh, the Bob Gilman Ski Race. It's Sunday. It's 11 o'clock. You can look it up on Facebook or online. The Bob Gilman uh, Fun Run Ski and Snowboard Race of a McIntyre Ski Area. We need to go tubing out there sometime. I may race. Matt's going to race, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What? On a snowboard? I'll be rooting for you. Yeah. I bet I could. I, I used to be a really good snowboarder. I, I wish you the best. I'll be I'll be watching. All right, folks. That's going to do it for us. <laughs> I remembered I wanted to say something. I guess that's it. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday morning. This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at cgibusinesssolutions.com. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry, located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. Clemento, Clemento's Pizzeria, family friendly, awesome for a date night. Clemento, Clemento's Pizzeria, for delivery call 603-782-8450. Clemento's Pizzeria, the best pizza in town. 1875 South Willow Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Best cocktails around. Come in as friends and leave as family. You are listening to WMNHLP, Manchester's radio. Broadcasting at 95.3 megahertz frequency modulation from the top of 1000 Elm Street. Our studios are located at 1045 Elm Street and licensed the Manchester Public Television Service in Manchester, New Hampshire, USA. Contact us by email at WMNH953 at gmail.com or through our website at WMNHradio.org.
bureaucratic war against German Jews began in 1935 with the Nuremberg race laws. These laws define anyone practicing the Jewish religion or those descended from Jewish grandparents regardless of current religious affiliation as a separate race, one working in opposition to German interests. Jews were barred from schools and certain professions. This seed of intolerance and violation of human rights ultimately led to murder on an epic scale. The Holocaust. On International Holocaust Remembrance Day, the international community memorializes the tragedy of the Holocaust committed by the Nazis and their collaborators during World War II. The Day of Remembrance was designated by the United Nations General Assembly in 2005. January 27th is the day the Soviet Army's 100th and 322nd Divisions liberated the largest Nazi extermination camp, Auschwitz-Birkenau. Holocaust is a term that, much like genocide, doesn't refer to a specific event in history. It is one group of people systematically killing another group of people based on a uniting trait, such as religion, ethnicity, country of origin, or another characteristic. Unfortunately, other genocides have occurred over the course of written history. At the heart of the observance, the UN urges member nations to develop programming with two goals, to remember survivors and victims of this atrocity, and to tell the history of the Jewish Holocaust, also called Shoah. In learning about it, they hope current generations will condemn any form of harassment or violence against groups of people based on intolerance. The Nazi party was voted into power in 1933, with Adolf Hitler as their chancellor. They established concentration and re-education camps for political prisoners, intellectuals, sexual promiscuity, or un-German activities, such as listening to jazz music. As previously mentioned, the Nuremberg race laws set Jews apart as a separate race in 1935. These laws of intolerance led to forced takeovers of Jewish businesses and homes, segregating Jews into ghettos, and even sanctioned killings. Then on November 9th and 10th, 1938, Jewish synagogues, businesses, and buildings across Germany and Austria were looted and destroyed by both civilians and German military forces called Sturmabteilung. Kristallnacht, which translates to Night of Broken Glass, was also the first instance of Jewish males being arrested and transferred to concentration camps solely on the basis of their Jewish heritage. Over the next few years, methods of persecution became more widespread and violent in all German-controlled territories. Jews were the target of mass shootings and pogroms. Many were relocated in sealed freight trains to concentration and extermination camps where they were killed indirectly through starvation, untreated illnesses and forced labor, or more directly, in gas chambers and shootings. Approximately six million Jewish people were murdered during the Holocaust. This loss is comparable to the population of an entire state like Indiana or Wisconsin. It is easy to say that Hitler is the root of the evil of the Holocaust, but there were choices made by millions of people that led to this dark era of our world's history. It is important to read accounts from the time to see what it was truly like not only for the persecuted Jewish people, but also those that helped them survive and those that killed them. What can we learn from them? How can we stand up against harassment and intolerance in our world today? The Pritzker Military Museum and Library encourages you to seek out ways to learn from and remember the liberators, victims, and survivors of the Holocaust. Visit the museum and library website, the UN, or another institution like our partners at the Illinois Holocaust Museum for ways you can commemorate this important day. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Here we go. It's that time again. Happy Friday. It is Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we are live 
from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc., etc. Uh, today is Friday, January 27, 2023. Uh, today also uh, is Holocaust, I'm sorry, International Holocaust. Uh, Remembrance Day, also known as uh, International uh, Holocaust Memorial Day, depending on some countries uh, use a little bit of a different name, as I learned earlier. But it's uh, that's why I played that uh, that clip there. So we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, about that actually, because I want to discuss uh, on the show, uh, spend a little time on the uh, you know the the rise in anti-Semitism that we've seen over the last number of years on social media. It's a very important subject. So we've got a lot. Uh, we've got a big, big day ahead of us. But uh, also, I am not alone, my friends. If you having girl problems, I feel bad for you, son. I, I got, got 99, 99 problems, problems, but a bitch ain't one. I got the rap patrol. DJ Reckless is here. What's up? What's going on? Uh, another day, another dolly. Yeah? Cold outside today. Uh, it's not that bad. Not that bad, actually. Not that bad. I complain, but it's not, not that not bad. Not that bad. It's not that bad, not considering, that bad. considering two days ago I was walking home and... Oh three, yeah, three yeah. inches of water. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite the night. You know, we've been fortunate so far in the sense that we still have yet to have like a major uh, blizzard where we get like a foot of snow or anything. But uh, but what we did get the other day was almost worse. <laughs> yeah, the rain, the rain. Like I was like, if it snows and freezes over tomorrow, you're gonna have three inches of ice on these roads. Yeah, like Elm Street or at like one a.m. in the morning was rough. Like. It looked like a river, and I was like, um, this isn't good. The, the minute I step off the sidewalk, an- ankle deep in water. Oh, yeah. I was like, yep, this is going to be a fun walk. <laughs> I was like, well. Oh, that's why your shoes were in the shower. Yes, I put <laughs> Yes, I put my shoes in the shower. Oh, that's not even the half of it. I tried to put them in the dryer, too. Guys, don't put your shoes in the dryer. Yeah, no. I walk in the bathroom, right? And, and my shoes are across the room back in the shower after I put them in the dryer because they went flying out of the out of the dryer Mm. into the shower. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, so we're not doing that again. Yeah, don't do that. Did Jenny know that you did that? Yes, Jenny knows. Okay, I was going to say, she she knows now if she didn't. (laughs) Yeah, let me just... (laughs) Don't don't break Jenny's dryer. (laughs) Yeah. Let me tell you something. When I heard that dryer go off, my jaw, my heart, everything just dropped. I was like... Yeah. I'm not ready for this one. <laughs> Luckily, I was like, oh, there's just the doors open. Okay. Are they still wet? I don't know. Oh, okay. I was just letting them air dry at this point. Yeah, because you've got more than one uh, pair, of, pair of shoes. Yeah, but that's my most expensive pair of shoes. Yeah. Well, they, they will dry. Uh, yeah, they eventually. will dry, but yep. Um, I wonder if they would dry. Did you... Uh, oh, you said you're air drying them. Did you put them outside? No, I put them uh, right by the washer. I wonder if if you put them out on the porch, they're gonna freeze. If there's water in them, Matt. I know that's what Too I was cold. wondering. Will they freeze? It's too cold. Yeah. Yeah. I need a warm I left day. My hat. I left my hat in, hat in the car the other day. Yeah. I took it out and it was freezing, soaking wet. I was like, how? How? You were in a car. That's how? Biz- that's kind of bizarre. <laughs> what? But yeah, really? I was like, yeah. It was. It was soaking wet. Um. I think it was like the moisture in the car or something. I was I, say, I how does that know. happen? It, it, is it possible that an animal of some sort, like uh, like a squirrel or something, got into the car and peed on your hat and then left? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, it totally just defecated on my hat. That's a well, jeez. I hope not. You would have noticed if. Uh, <laughs> that's even worse. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about that. Happy Friday, you, everybody. You you put and you put it on after that. Uh, that's uh, wow. You're a braver man than I. Yeah, that'll <laughs> well, do it. Jeez, that'll do it. Uh, if you'd like to join us today on the program, 603-250-6007 is the number, 603-250-6007. You can also text us at 617-917-4476. Uh, I'm on social media, at Matt Connerton. And, of course, you can uh, interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. We'll say hello to everybody in there in a moment. And, the, of course, you can email me, uh, Matt at MattConnerton.com. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603-250-6007. Uh, by the way, of course, uh, Friday is uh, my favorite day around here. 
Uh, of course, uh, we have this show until 6 p.m., and then we have uh, Retro Spectrum Radio host. I'm sorry, no, then we have, see, I'm getting it mixed up. Then we have Granite State of Mind hosted by the great Rob Azevedo from 6 to 7 p.m., and then I'm back from 8 to 11 p.m. for Retro Spectrum Radio with Paul E.C., and I have the honor and privilege of being one of Paul's co-hosts on that show, along with our friend uh, DJ Steve. Um, and, of course, uh, today on the program, coming up at 5 p.m., we have Eric Pilcher's Classic Film Review. And this week, the subject is the film Starship Troopers, which I must tell you, now, I have heard the review. I never had, I never saw the film. I remember when it came out, never saw it. Never had much interest in it. After listening to Eric's review, I actually do want to see it now. So uh, that will be coming up at uh, 5 p.m. And also, and I don't know if you know this, uh, DJ Reckless, but today is a very important day. And for those of you watching online, you can even see I've got my Hopknot shirt on. It is the grand reopening of the Hopknot right across the street. I did know this. I actually walked by. I was going to go in, but they were closed. I think they open at 4. Yeah, they're opening at 4 now during the week because... Uh, uh, Makes part- sense. Yeah, they've they've adjusted uh, the hours... Uh, you know, because uh, lunchtime would tend to be pretty quiet there. So now they're open uh, instead of four. I'm sorry, instead of noon to 10, I think it's four until midnight, maybe. I think they're still kind of playing with the hours a little bit, but op- sense, opening yeah. at four during the week makes more sense for them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. man, I got a $25 gift certificate. I got to use the. Oh, nice. From, from oh, the, that's right. Yeah. From the Miracle on Elm Street. Still got that thing. Lucky. I know. Yeah, yeah. And the best part is I work two doors down. I work the YMCA now. So. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm I'm always by home. Tonight's going to be weird. I'm working from 5 to 9.15. So, like, literally at the right y? at... Yeah. Oh, that's unusual uh, hours. No, I have to short shift because I'm still training. Ah. But I, I'm excited because I'm literally right by Elm so I can go party with my friends after. Mm-hmm. Going to go out and do some recon for tomorrow night. What do you mean? Get some people to come out to tomorrow night's show. I see, yes. So, uh, so what do you have uh, going tomorrow night? I'm headlining 603. Yes. On a Saturday. That is crazy. Oh, will this be your... This This is my second time. Your second time headlining on this a Saturday? Is, it's turning into uh, a weekly thing, I'm pretty sure. I don't know yet. Or bi-weekly. I'm not sure, but wow. Yeah. I was there last weekend. When I say the pride that was in my heart at the end of that night, because literally... I took that crowd and I flipped it from like completely just arrogant people who are so rude, right? Mm -hmm. The regulars there. And I brought in a ton of college kids. Yeah. Which was like, it's unheard of recently. I'm I'm intrigued though by this, (laughs) by this characterization of some people as arrogant people who are so rude. So So, so listen, I'm I'm, I'm curious about this. I, I, I stand by this and I say when people get too comfortable at a place, they start to test the boundaries. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. I they don't start I, to cause problems. I don't they start to. Fight. I don't disagree. I have seen that kind of thing happen. Yeah. Some regulars Hell, there. It's happened here in this in this. Yeah, exactly. well, we, we won't get into get that. Comfortable. Yeah. People get comfortable. Complacent. That's and then they think they can. Uh, that, that was a long time ago. Actually, it wasn't that long ago. But oh my! If, if you're thinking of the incident that I'm thinking of, anyway, yes, yeah, so I'm I, thinking of the incident you're thinking. But of. Uh, yes, uh, go on. But they they tend to they tend to cause problems, right? And that makes new clientele not want to go there. Yes. Right. I'm sorry, but if I go to a place and I see a fight and there's and I get threatened, I wouldn't want to go there. Right. It's funny what liquor does to people. Yeah, it uh, a liquid courage they call it. Uh, yes. But me, I wouldn't know that anymore because I'm sober. You are. I am. Excellent. For, I had enough of last Saturday. For how long have you been sober now? Uh, do we call it sober actually in hindsight? Well, the thing is, so when people... It's tough because I'm 22 and <sighs> I don't I don't want to start... I don't want to keep overdoing it with yeah. alcohol. Yeah. Like last night. Okay, I will be. Actually, it's not really sober. I had a shot last night. That was it. I was like, it really didn't do anything to me. Because when I hear people use that phraseology when they talk about I'm sober, that usually means they were yeah. like an alcoholic and now they're in recovery and now no. they're sober. I was definitely not an alcoholic. I don't think I was. Do you classify me as an alcoholic? I wouldn't say so because you don't. Uh, I mean, an, an I wasn't al- drinking every day. Yeah, I was going to say an alcoholic typically has to drink every day. I and- was drinking too much on the nights I did drink. <laughs> right. Yes, I, I would say that that would be but my also feel observation like that, that, as that's well. That's the arrogant, degenerate side of me that just <laughs> wanted to party. Yes. And was trying, and now I realize that, like, after a few weeks ago, it's not a good idea. Because last weekend I recorded my whole set, 
at oh. 6.03. You did? Yes. It was absolutely terrible. Oh, no. Because I was absolutely... I was gone. I was toasted. I was... Oh, really? Yeah, I was drunk. It was... You recorded it how? Video? Or? Um, no. I have an option in my software to record. Oh, cool. And then export it and post it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But I... Did you end up not posting it? That will never see the light of day <laughs> ever. Really? That bad? No. It wasn't that bad, but in my head, it was terrible. Yeah, well, you're your own worst critic, which is actually a good thing. There were some points in that night where I was questionably, why, why am I on stage? Because I was like, the way I was dropping music and just transitioning was just not okay. It was terrible. But people don't really care. I asked everybody about it. Yeah. Even even the owner. He's like, no one cared. Everybody was drunk. Sure. You did. A, like, And if they were, if people did care, then just let, let them. Because right. you did a great job. You brought people. You did You did exactly what you needed to do. But it says something positive about you, though, that even though he told you that and other people may have told you that, you care. I know it's not okay. Right. And that's important because that shows that you care about what you do. And exactly. then you take and pride I, in it. And I want to get better at it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so uh, so what, what's the rule now then that you've imposed upon yourself? You're not going to drink at all? Mm, I wish I could say that. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could say that, but I work in nightlife and I DJ and the way people tip me a lot of times yeah. is they buy me a shot. Yeah. You know? But yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to overdo it this time. I know my limits now. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Uh, our friend uh, Charles Richardson is uh, on the line, I believe. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Uh, Christian, or have you abolished Christian and you just go by DJ Reckless all the time? I now? still go by both. He goes okay. by both. So, so from, one former, from one former DJ to a current DJ, it's all about presentation. Mm-hmm. So you, I, I'm sure you already know this, but it doesn't matter... How many people are on stage? Are they dancing? It's because you could have a, you know, if you were on the top floor, which I heard you were over at yep. 603 that one day, and there's only like 25 people. We make sure like 20, or at least 20 of the people are dancing. And if not, you go ahead and read the crowd. And yeah. this, the same thing with mixing, you know, as long as those mixes are, are fluid and they keep the people dancing, keep the people drinking, you go right ahead. And of course, you could bring your energy on, on top of it. No matter, you can't make anybody dance. I've gone to, I've done weddings where nobody danced, but everybody said, you know what? You kept the party light, you kept the party hopping. Um, and we, we appreciate what you did. It's just mm-hmm. going to be some one of those type of nights where nobody dances, but everybody enjoys the music. Yeah. And my main thing um, is if nobody's dancing, keep them drinking, keep them there. Yeah, keep exactly. Them drinking. So it brings in money for the bar, right? Mm hmm. I have to question one thing you said, though, Charles, because I heard you say that uh, you can't make anybody dance. But I feel like I've seen Westerns where, like, uh, some dude will pull out a gun and, and, and be like, dance, and, and uh, you know, shoot no. at somebody's feet. I'll, like, I'll no, be No, 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 you, 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 you just go ahead and say, no, I'm not going to dance, and you get your toe shot off. That's about it. Yeah, that sounds like I a have, bad trade. There's hmm. one time, I do this a, a very few times. Yeah. There's a song that has this one one line or it says it's like oh my god I forgot the song it's y'all y'all ain't a vibe it's very depressing I will loop that for like four phrases yeah and I'll transition into the other song yeah people will look at me and I'll just go ham after that and get them on the dance floor I ran into a situation Saturday that last Saturday that I've never run into before I have an opener for me now because I want the kid to do good yeah, I don't need one, but I like it because I want to bring up that next like wave of talent. Yeah, and he had everybody dancing at ten thirty, and the bar wasn't making money. And the owner said something to me, and I was like, I was like, oh no! I was like, the bar, like we had maybe a hundred people in there, and everybody was dancing. Mm-hmm. The bar was a ghost town. Mm. So I was like, all right, I gotta go on. And do what I call the push and pull effect. I push them away from the dance floor. I get them to the bar. I get them drinking. Mm-hmm. I give it 20 minutes. Pull them back in. And I do it again. Yep. And again. And again until about 11.30. Yeah. And 11.45. And at that point, when it's shoulder to shoulder in that bar and I see the bar is just flowing, I just go ham. Now, so when do you, uh, now, so what is it? You serve the ham? Is there a buffet? How does that work? 
I hate you. Well, I'm just uh, you. You keep mentioning ham, uh, Charles. Are you aware of this? Uh, do they even have ham I in go, Florida? Oh, oh, yeah, they have ham down here. Okay. But believe me, it's imported, but they they have it. Ham prices are expensive down right, and, uh, right now. Do we want to talk about that? Talk about what? Ham. The price of ham. Oh, the price of ham. But like <laughs> the price of ham is absurd. <sighs> I'll tell you what. I don't even like ham, price and I'm upset. Absurd. Eggs, ham, a ham and egg. If you want to have ham and eggs, it's uh, you're paying out the nose. <laughs> you're paying. It's terrible. It's like five bucks right. a pound. Yeah, you right might as well go ahead and order a 14 ounce T bone steak for the same price. Whoa, what's yeah, right. Hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, man. It's uh. So listen, as as, as far as everything goes, like you, what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing, and the bar owners, no matter what bar you go to, the bar owners are going to always look at the bottom line as, hey, did you make my sales go up? That's it. Exactly. So you could play literally. You could play like a jukebox. As long as people are dancing and buying, buying money, that's a fan. So mm. don't ever listen to what the bar... For me, hey, how's my music? They're going to say whatever. For me, I have to find that... But, like... I have to find how to make the bar money, put mm. on a show, and make people like me. So mm. they follow well, me like, like you just like, like you go, went ahead and did. You go ahead and do 20 minutes of... Uh, 20, 30 minutes of just hardcore, you know people are dancing to stuff. And then 20, 30 minutes of kind of transitioning, maybe work on your scratching, maybe work on your blending, and then mm-hmm. you go ahead and do another 20, 30 minutes of bringing people back. I don't out. even scratch. I don't even scratch past like 10, 30 or 11 o'clock because like nobody cares about transition, crazy transitions past that time. You're, really? They're, no, they're, no, yeah, that's, they're all that's what I'm saying, Christian. Nobody mm. really cares. Mm. Ah. No, no, nobody really cares as long as long as the music is playing. Nobody cares. The, who's going to care is people that are either fellow DJs mm-hmm. or people that are looking for to, to bring you to their club. Fellow DJs, that's it. everybody else in there. That's it. Speaking of DJs, all right, y'all DJs out there need to stop coming up on stage and hovering over me. That is the most irritating thing I have ever encountered. You, 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 you're, you're you're never gonna get that out. It, trust me, it's never gonna happen. It's I had been some kid. I had, I had for some years, kid. but it's not gonna happen. I had some kid literally People take out his phone and shaz- like what Shazam my set just to see what I was playing. I was like, bro. oh wow, I was like I am gonna just like yeah, that's lose that, it on you. That's just here. that's just rude. Did that so that it, you know it, it's 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 not even about that. I've had people come up and just see what equipment I've been using. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. it's fine you know, to be up there for like two three hey, minutes. Can I put my iPod up to your mixer. Get out of here. <laughs> Take them off my stage. The, uh, I I think human beings in general, though, I think there's a certain degree of obliviousness that that people have where it doesn't occur to them that you're working. And they're interfering by, oh, yeah, by, by no, being drunk. A, people don't care about that. Well, it's not even being drunk. Yeah. I, I just mean people in general lack common sense sometimes. Like I, I've had experiences doing this radio show. Where, well, there was someone we referred to earlier who did show up drunk one time, unfortunately, and I uh, had to be uh, uh, escorted escorted out. out. But uh, no, but I mean, get out of here. But but there's just a, like sometimes people are just clueless. Like I've had it happened recently. In fact, I had somebody on the show. Who, uh, I won't say who, I don't want to embarrass them, and they're a lovely person, but this person was sitting at the news desk, and... Uh, Thank it was, you, by it, the way. It was his, uh, you don't what? want to embarrass me. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> no, it wasn't here. <laughs> no, uh, no, this was this was recently, but uh, this this person, it was their first time on the show, they were sitting at the news desk, and, and like, we're about to go on, like, I put the headphones on, I start the theme music for my show, it's time to go on, and I look over, and I see his mouth moving, and he's looking at me, and I'm like, Oh, he must have something really important to tell me if he's talking to me when we're about to go on. And I kind of pull my headphones off and I say, what? And I swear to God, he says to me, so have you, have you been here at the station a long time? Have you been doing your show here a long time? Like he's trying to make... I feel like I've done that. Before. I used to do that. I did used to do that. Yeah, back when I first started here, yeah. Sort of, but not not to this extreme. No. Like we're seconds away from going on and he's like, so you've been here a long time? I'm like, uh, yeah, six years in April. Okay, here we go. And I hit the button and hi, welcome to Matt Connerton. <laughs> on Leash. But it's just like people are just... And, and some people, I, I swear to God, see now I'm ranting. Some people, it, it's like they... They assume that this is all magic mm-hmm. and that I just come in here and sit down and start talking. I can't talking. tell you how many times people be like, let me see your playlist. Bro, yeah. I don't have playlists. I'm not Spotify. Yeah. But yeah, it's right. But you're I'm not Spotify, <laughs> dude. But you're working. Like like they should just know better than to interfere with what you know, obviously you're focused. Oh, my favorite on the thing. Task. My so I experienced this Tuesday because 
for some reason, I had this grand idea to do what's called a boiler room set, mm. where everybody, like, I let people on stage, I'm crowded, you boil the ham. <sighs> Moving on. Boil the ham. Oh, God. <laughs> terrible idea. Terrible idea. Terrible <laughs> idea. Terrible idea. Mm. All the guys kept trying to go on stage, and I have one rule. I have one rule for photos. Yeah. No guys on stage. Yeah. No guys on stage. It's good. Girls, it's fine. It's cool. Right, because they know how to party. The guys aren't there just drinking their drink on stage looking dumb. Right. Girls know how to party, and I love it. And <laughs> this chick, I swear to God, almost spilt her drink on my thing. And then starts. Oh, no. She starts, like, moving around. Keep in mind, I was on the jankiest setup ever. The stage was probably the size of this desk, if, if you're watching online. All right, so it's probably what? Which ain't that big, by the Three, way. Three. It's maybe one and a half of these. So we'll call it five by yeah, five I by eight. Awesome. Not even. I think they gave me the wrong name. Hey, guys, I got to run. I'm uh, off to play mini golf, guys. You guys have a good one. Have fun. And, uh, Get a hole in one for me. All right, Charles. Thank you for the call. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. That was our friend uh, Charles Richardson from the great state of Florida and host of the uh, Charles Richardson Show. Yes, go ahead, uh, Rex. But, yeah, so. no. This stage was like five by eight, maybe five by seven around there. And very small. So... Yeah. They didn't have a table that fit it. So what I did was I got a high top from the bar, put a black tablecloth over it that literally only fit my laptop, my laptop stand, and my board. Yeah. My The amount of times I had to play catch with my laptop that oh, night was yeah. scary because it kept bouncing off. Yeah, because people were bumping into it? or the, yeah, yeah, and they were like bouncing on the stage. And was like, uh, stop. Stop. Yeah, and the- it got to the point where I had to kick people off. Uh, our friend uh, EZG is on the line. Hello, Eric. Hey, how's everybody going today? How's everybody going? Yeah, hey, I want a question if I did a reckless. Do you sign any autographs? <laughs> I have signed autographs in places <laughs> I can't talk about. Wait a minute. What was with that laugh afterward? Yeah, that's, that's what yeah. was What was that? That was a little uh, well, sus. Always asked, uh, I they... You said, do you sign autographs or photos? I said, no. <laughs> you asked me that all the time when I was on the show. Anyways, the, uh, as everybody knows, it's the Royal Rumble tomorrow. I finally remember the name. Alexa Bliss versus EST. And I'm reading some highlights of who do you think is going to win. But I'm going with EST, and I'm going to go with Greg Wyatt there. I'm going to go with, um, oh, yeah, I'm going to go with, um, what's her name? I can't remember the other match. Um, Greg Wyatt. Is know, a, Greg Wyatt's taking it all. He's a big star, that Greg Wyatt. I got Wyatt. my money on him. Yeah, Greg he's Wyatt. Ma- oh, yeah, <laughs> what's going to happen here with Roman, Roman Wayne's? He's going to win the match. But he's either going to win by disqualification or a count out because uh, Zayn's going to get involved. It's all part of the storyline. Uh-huh. And then, uh, of course, Cody Rose is, will win the Royal Rumble. Or it might, uh, or it might be uh, uh, Seth Rollins. I think those are the two top guys. And I, this is a big upset. I think Liz Morgan's going to win the, uh, win the Women's Royal Rumble. Yeah. That's my predictions. Yeah. And, of course, I, I won't be watching it the whole night because I can't stay up to 11 o'clock anymore. It's too late. Oh. So I'm gonna watch it the next day. If you guys don't, if you guys can buy Peacock tonight for four nine nine a month, you can watch it actually a month later if you want to. What is? Which is good about having those. It's the Royal Peacock Rumble. Channel. No, it's not tonight. It's tomorrow night, right? Tomorrow night. Oh, I, know, I did I'm write you a big, uh, a big explanation of what's going to happen in the next three WrestleMania. I mean, next three events. But you probably take that with a grain of salt. I don't know how I went on and on. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you had time to read that last yeah, night. Yeah, no, man. I, I definitely I mean, think Rick White's going to win. You think what? Rick Flair is going to win? Is that what you said? Yeah, I think Rick Flair is going to win. Oh, Rick yeah, Flair? I was thinking about Woo! that. He said Rick Flair might, might be in there. I said, I hope not. <laughs> oh, my God. This guy says, if he does enter, he's going to get thrown out in one minute or less. Yeah, I think he Come can. Come on, win. they only have Rick Flair in there. And, and why don't they throw the Hulks in there, too? And, and they, uh, Oh, yeah, one guy uh, definitely will be in there. I guarantee it. The uh, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. He hasn't been around lately, so you know, it starts some kind of storyline. And it's going to fight... Um, the Almighty there at WrestleMania. That's a storyline right now. I remember a couple of years ago, he, people were mad because Brock Lesnar was 30th in the Rumble. Of course, he won. But everybody knows that Brock Lesnar is good for business. How's this for a uh, WrestleMania main event? Greg Wyatt versus the Hulkster. Oh, wow. That, that would be a quick match. Oh, yeah. I read today that they said The Fiend is dead. The Fiend? They're not using that storyline anymore. I don't believe it, though. I don't believe it either. How about this? The yeah. Fiend versus the Hulkster. 
Yeah, well, you want you you want your prediction the other day that the um, that lady there, uh, 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 what's her face? Uh, it's a, a little bit better than China was. Oh, Rhea Ripley. She's uh, you, infinitely you, you made that better. Prediction that she's gonna win. That's a lot of people are, are predicting that. But you know what? I don't make any sense now. You know a lot about wrestling. How could you bet on it if it's six? Why? Uh, why? Why wouldn't you be able to? Why not? Yeah, but if somebody knows who's going to win, though. Isn't that like a, a stupid bet? But you don't know if you're betting. Yeah, because it's three o'clock on tomorrow on the uh, unless you talk or you watch it on your phone. Unless they have you all the bets for the, for the all the matches. You know who's going to win the Royal yeah. Rumble? Who's going to come in thirtieth? Who's going to come in first? Unless that's, you're uh, that's ridiculous. Unless you work there, you don't know who's going to win. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's rumors. Oh yeah, there's uh, rumors that um, Vince now is going to get into creative and start bossing people around. Like I always say, he never really left. Right, that's true. The, the guy, the guy, he's like he's like a he's like a, um, a pro for President Trump. He's always in trouble. <laughs> what? Remember Trump? who was always involved in wrestling for a while, and now he's in trouble. With all these lawsuits and that's true. Not paying his taxes. But well, anyway, I read an article the other day that they were saying that he's got to be one of the one of the worst starts in running for president in the history of running for president. Because he, he he dropped he dropped in and said, oh, "I'm going to be running for president," and he's really done nothing. What do you think uh, Trump is more proud of, uh, having been president or his being in the celebrity wing of the WWE Hall of Fame? I, I, I think at this point, neither. Oh, well, that's too bad. Yeah, this, oh, yeah, I came up with an article today. His article's all over the place. I didn't read the whole thing, but he said, I was at the, the start of it. He said, uh, if I was president, he said, I could fix this uh, Ukraine Russia thing in 24 hours. Only I can fix it's so it. It's easy to say when he's not the president right now. Isn't that easy to say, uh, Mike? And uh, Mike, I mean, Matt and DJ, reckless. I don't think DJ Reckless is listening. I think no, he's zoned out. I think he's fantasizing yeah. about. Uh, isn't it easy to say that when you're not the president? He's fantasizing about Hulk Hogan versus Greg Wyatt in the uh, main oh, event yeah, of WrestleMania. Boy. That'd be a big match. Greg Wyatt. Yeah, if yeah. I see the if I see the Hulkster in that Royal Rumble, I'm gonna scream. Well, if you see yeah. the Hulkster coming out, Rick Flair, and they might as well throw the Hulkster, and he's like 70, 69, 70 years old, and Rick Flair is seventy three. I mean, come on. Yeah. I'd rather see the Rock and. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin before I see Hogan and Ric Flair. Come on, come on! Can't they have? Can't they have some better wrestlers? That, you know, NXT giving them a shot. There's well, some great wrestlers in NXT. Easy G is very uh, ageist. Have you noticed this? Uh, uh, hey, it's the world of wrestling. Does it ever make sense, Matt? But wrestling fans love nostalgia. All of us do, except you, Eric. Except you. You're the only yeah, one. That's the point. Where they, they can't do it no more. Come on, they're taking slots from the young fellas. mm Hmm. Why don't you just throw Shawn Michaels and Triple H in the mix? Come on. Come Why don't you on. just call it the old fart where, I'm all, where everybody has to be over 60 years old? Don't, wow. <laughs> don't let Bruce hear you talking like that. Uh, ridiculous. I know a friend of mine loves uh, Brock Lesnar. He said, he said, go for business, put Spanish in the seats. Yes. Yes. He does. Hey, he's very part time, anyways. So he, mm-hmm. he, he's, not, he's not going anywhere. He has a big contract, I heard, with WWE. He makes a lot of money. Right. That's right. He's, ne- he's never going back to that cage stuff. UFC? No, he's done. Yeah, he, he knows where his, he knows where his butter is breaded, as the old saying he, goes. That's the old his saying butter goes. And bread. He, he knows where his butter is breaded. Yes. Oh, he's got a, he's got a sweet deal over there. He only works part time, very part time, and he makes a lot of money. Uh huh. Would you like to have that deal, Matt? I sure would. Yeah. You know, what's that song again? Play for the money, money. Must be the money by Deion Sanders. Yeah, you play that again? I don't play that anymore. Oh, all right. Yesterday was the last anyway, day. That's not my, my foolishness. I know everybody hates wrestling talk, so it's, it's, I'll listen to the rest of the show. Bye bye. <gasps> all right, Eric. Bye bye. Boy, you should have known by now. Easy dope. All right. Well, that opens up a line for you 603 250 6007. 603 250 6007. You know what uh, I was going to say? Uh, before Eric's call, the one thing that I used to experience a lot when I would do shows is, um, so, I, you know, I, I played in bands. So when you're in a band, you don't have people coming up on stage with you. So that was never a problem like like what you experienced. But 
the one thing I did experience quite a bit, especially when the Uptown Tavern used to be open, and I would do shows there. And sometimes mm-hmm. I would not only be the promoter, but I would run sound if I wasn't playing, if it was a show where I was promoting with other bands. And um, it was not, it, you, you reminded me of this when you mentioned other DJs going up and hovering. When I would run sound, uh, yeah. people would, like other people who often, and maybe they knew something about what they were doing and they were just too drunk to sound intelligent, I don't know. But yeah, occasionally like I'd have people hovering you know, like some dude would come over and be like, oh, you should, yeah, you, you got to turn down the mids on the uh, guitar and, you know, the vocals uh, too far in the back. And, you know, it's like, yeah, okay, thank you, but go away now. <laughs> Literally, right? <laughs> and the thing is, they put you in a bad position when they do that. It, it used to be very frustrating to me because, uh, you know, it's like, okay, so this this dude who may, and for all I know, maybe he knows much more. I mean, I'm a, a trained audio engineer, but maybe he knows much more about this than I do. But if I if I ignore his advice, then he's going to think I'm a jerk. Mm-hmm. And if but if I take his advice, then I've just allowed him to make me his B. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. So it's like it's uh it's one of very, those things. It's very awkward. But we have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, Matty, it's Gary. Hey, Gary. I know I know what you mean by sound. I had uh, I used to do sound for my friend's band, and we had a little small, just a little small, you know, uh, setup. And I always got the drunk girls. So oh, we had drunk uh, girls are funny. <clears throat> I would set out, you know, further in the crowd because we did small venues, you know, just little bars and everything. I was at a bar up in um, oh uh, one of the small towns near Pittsfield, and. Uh, so Center Barnstead, and I'm sitting there, and I used to always have to get a piece of thick plastic to put over because I I get everything set, and then all of a sudden they come dancing around the table. They come stand over the table. So what do you do? I said, well, I'm doing the sound and everything. So then they take a break, and I'd always put music on. They come over, and they always had a beer or they had a drink in their hand. I said, well, you got to be careful. I said, this is expensive. What's this do? It says it makes sound, you know? <laughs> oh, and then I, I, I would get so nervous. I'd stay there by myself, mm-hmm. all, you know, all the mm-hmm. times till I'd say, like, could you, you know, I'm trying to do some stuff, please, you know? Yeah. And, man, it was, yeah, I was so nervous. It, only, it was only $10,000. The board was only $10,000, but still, you know? <laughs> and they'd, yeah. always, they'd always tend to come over. There was always one of them every time I went. And I have just ready to spill the drinks, and oh, I always get so nervous at that. So I know. Then I had some guys come over, like you said, you know, uh, could you uh, could you put up uh, that rhythm guitar a little? Uh, uh, that bass doesn't sound yeah. great. I made I made a keyboard. And I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Exactly. You know? My problem is now. But yeah. Right? Go. Yeah. Go ahead. Go. It's the drunk <laughs> girls are cool. Okay. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> but it's the drunk girls I went to school with. Oh yeah. That, become a problem and think they're entitled yeah. because they went to school with me. Yes. Uh, I had a chick. Now, these these had, um, Christian, these guys, they had their uh, jarhead boyfriends, you know? Mm-hmm. So their jarhead boyfriends would come over after and they're kind of lit. Never been in battle, but they're kind of lit. They're going, you messing with my girls? And, <laughs> no. <laughs> I think I got to take her home, you know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know what you mean by yeah. Some of them are okay, but these were really just stagger over, and I'm like, I, I'm not in the mood for this, please. No. But well, Maddie, you know, musicians, they love us all. Yes, of course, of course. What, what were you gonna say? Yeah, I can't remember now. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, Christian, uh, I'm glad to hear that you're sober. That's good. Yeah. Now. Well, we well, well let's keep it up, yeah, young guy, for a while. You know, I think uh, honestly, take I don't it mind. easy. Huh? You know, so I'm uh, I'm happy for you. Thanks. And uh, just keep on doing what you're doing, man. You know, you you play the music. Music is is great. And Maddie, I'll be listening tonight. Yes, I got my tea ready to go and ready to rock. I'm having a great week this week. Well, a couple Good. weeks ago, I was just, but I'm a, I'm having a great week this week. So there you go. I'm psyched. Good, so, good. Well, and I love the show, and uh, you know I love you, Maddie, and Christian. I love you, man. You're you're, you're you young too. and you're doing really well. I like that. 
And of course, Jenny, my love, I love yes. Jenny. It's hard um, carrying and, uh, Manchester nightlife on my she's back. A, as she's I a say. good, she's <laughs> a great person. So she, I love her laugh. Absolutely, she makes, she makes me happy when she laughs. Good, so. good. Well, I'm <laughs> but, glad. Yeah, all of you guys, you know, like I said, Maddie, you're my family. Jenny, you're my family. You know, and uh, of course, uh, Polly C. I love you, Polly C. Now, and uh, like I said, maybe someday we'll see each other. But yeah. until then, yeah, you guys have a great show tonight. All right. And it's been a great week, like I said, Maddie, and uh, much love to everybody. All so, right. All right, Gary. Have a great show. All right. Thank you. Later. Thank you for the call. Bye bye. All right. That was our friend Gary. And uh, yeah, you'd started to say something about. Uh... Oh, yeah. This I think it was this chick who kept coming up to me Tuesday because I did an event for uh, St. Anselm's. Yeah. Shout out to my St. A's fan. Them over there, I think it's bro. pronounced St. Anselm's. Whatever it's they, called. I, I've, I've, heard, kids. I, I've, I, I've heard they get upset if you pronounce it uh, Anselm's. <laughs> Ans, Anselm. I don't know. But like, either way, all I know is those kids can party. I love them. They're awesome. But there is this one chick that goes there who I went to school with for years. And she just thought she was so entitled. Oh. And I was like, you need to get off the stage. Yeah. And then some kid kept coming up to me Tuesday night with his phone. The new thing is people will hold up their requests on their phones like this. Oh, you're, really? Like, they'll, they'll, like, type it out. I have a thing now where I'll, um, I'll, if they keep doing it more than once, yeah. I'll take the phone and pretend to read it, and I'll change the language on their phone. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, that's funny. And then I'll change it back, but, like... Oh, that's... And that'll teach them... And I have I have I have a thing on here. I admire that. I, it's the funniest thing. I have my I have I have my buddy film it one time. Cause no, the dude was one the guy one of the guys I did it to was blatantly drunk and he was just yeah. a complete and utter a hole. Yeah, right. And I was like, yo, I can't do this. Like, stop. We should clarify because uh, you used to work at T Mobile, so you you you're probably I, I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And I have one thing when they when they hold up when they hold up their little sign on their phone. I have a sign on my phone that says I can't read. Oh really? I can't read. Uh, Sorry. Does it bother you when people do that? When they it does. It yeah. does. It does because I'm not going to play it. I was going to say I, you know, I'm not going to play it because it it occurs to me now that you bring it up. I have no idea. It's funny. I I, I guess I'd never thought about it. I have no idea what the etiquette is uh, in terms of of uh, requests. It's okay to request, right? Yeah. It's okay to come up once or twice, right? Okay. It's fine. I don't care. Yeah. It's when you're coming up to me multiple times or with songs that you know damn well don't fit the vibe. Yeah. And my other thing is, why am I doing you a favor? I'm already going to play the song. <laughs> right. I'm going to play it a little later on in the night. Yeah. Money talks. Uh, Tips. Uh, Tips. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. I'm paid to be here. Not here. Not, not, not paid to play what exactly what you tell me to play. Right. In what order. Right. And I love when people tell me I suck. It's the funniest thing. I had this kid Tuesday who um who did it and I was gonna I was about to play a song and it come it's the performer in me yeah. that comes out when this funny things like this happen. I was about to play um I don't F with you by E forty. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. And I go, Yo, shout out to the kid over here who told me I suck. <laughs> and then I dropped that song. Yeah. And everybody just died laughing. Oh wow! And the kid looked at me. His heart sunk, and I was like, "Dude, you don't have to be a dick." Like, sorry. Uh, Learn to be respectful. We have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Did I just hear DJ Don Rickles over there say that he uh, makes people tip him to play requests? Sometimes, yeah. If you're gonna come up to me and like request it twenty million times, yeah, mm. yeah. I wow. mean, it, it, wow, it's, Junior, you got you got a lot to learn there, buddy. Hey, you got a lot to learn there, Christian. Go ahead, go ahead and ask people to, for tips. I don't okay? ask them with for your, tips blatantly. With your pompous self. I don't ask that them is, for tips. That is, that is just, that's, that's lame, dude. No, no, that no. Is lame. Let me Let me backtrack for a minute. I don't ask them for tips, obviously. But well, if you what do you want, do? What do you tell them for tips? No, them you no, want no, tip? no, 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 no. If they, like, obviously I'm going to play their song, right? It's obviously in the back of my head, but if you want it played like sooner, like it doesn't always have to be a, like money. Come on, dude. Well, well, what do you want from them? What do you want? A drink? I don't. I don't care. Yeah. Listen, it, if you want to win the fan base over, play their song. 
and then they'll come over and tip you and, and give you a drink or, or give mm-hmm. you kudos and keep coming back every week. That happens you know, anyway. You're not going you're not going mean... to win a fan base over with the whole if you want to hear something you got to earn it attitude. You can't do that, dude. You I can't think do there's that. a miscommunication. You got to win them here. over by doing exact you got to be the ambassador of the room. Yeah, you I... are there responsible for making them happy for 3 or 4 hours and you got to do exactly what they want to hear. I think I think Reckless wants to clarify something. I think there's a miscommunication or a mis mis, well, mis misinterpretation. Uh, obviously. Because <laughs> you're making it seem like I beg for tips, which I do not. I do. No, 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 no. I'm not saying begging for tips. You're okay. demanding them in order to play their music. I'm going to play their music, right? But I'm not going to play it exactly when they want it played. You, you know, like blending well, and stuff like you're that. Not. You're going to do it when you get to it. Exactly. Okay? But you, right. You but if you're coming up to that, me. But don't. Don't tell them that they owe you anything ever. Uh, yeah, no, of course not. But all I, like, if you're gonna come up to me a million times in one night, yeah, and, and well, rec- that's when you just do. That's when you just tell them to get the f away from you. Again, there's no, there's no tips involved. Don't, don't do that. But if somebody is just straight out being a pest, I mean, I, I, I was a 12 year old pest DJ Steve with ACDC <laughs> 43 years ago. But yeah. he never he never said to me, listen, go, go ask your mom for three dollars and come back up here and I'll play back in black for you. It, it, it just don't do that. Don't demand anything or, or suggest anything or ask for anything or beg for anything or do anything like that. Yeah, no. if, if, a, if, a, if, a, if a if a drunken moron keeps coming up and asks for a song, especially one that you hate, just you know what? Tell them that you'll play it and then don't play it. And then mm-hmm. they'll get the message and too. they'll leave you alone. I do that all the time. Yeah, I'll play it. And it never gets to it that night. <laughs> yeah, you didn't exactly, play my song at the end exactly. of the night. But yeah, don't, don't sorry. Put money in the equation. Yeah. Well, I get where you're coming from with it. Though. Yeah. I do 100%. Uh, Infinity Vein uh, says in the chat room, uh, I think that what he's trying to say is he has no problem playing the song, but tips are greatly appreciated. Yes. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. But yeah, it got... It got all right. That's where. Well, the- a- absolutely. That that that. I mean, sure, but yeah. Again, I mean, y- do, do they not pay you well enough for you? I mean, I work. I, I DJ. I did what you did twenty seven mm-hmm. years. I never had a tip jar in front of my DJ booth ever. I got paid amply. Do, 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 do they not pay you good enough? Bars up here pay you pretty well for New Hampshire. I will say that. I just wanted the people to dance. I wasn't looking yeah, for anything that's, else. I, that's where I'm at. Like I, I took Saturdays because one, I, I worked for it, and I was always there when they needed me, no yeah. matter what. Oh yeah, absolutely. It, and there was, there's been numerous of nights that I have DJed for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. You've worked hard. You've worked very hard. Especially oh, man, in the nineties when I worked over at the Coliseum nightclub, if I would have put a tip jar in my are DJ you talking booth, Coliseum? Anyway, wait, wait Coliseum in the throat. What are you talking in, like in New Hampshire? Anywhere I worked for where, New where England, was the I Coliseum? Never put a tip jar Just, in front of my DJ booth. That's for, all. for my sake, for my sake, where was the Coliseum? The Coliseum was on Second Street okay. in Manchester. Never mind. Never mind. Never oh, mind. there's a same. There's this really huge club out in um. Rhode Island called the Coliseum that's been out there for years. Ah, uh, yeah, that's well, probably a common name, actually. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't think it was the same complex. It had three nightclubs in it over on the west. Side. I think it's a church now or something. Oh, actually. really? So. Oh, is it where the where the Greek church is? Because that 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 looks like you could put you could fit three <laughs> clubs in that building. <laughs> <laughs> it's some kind. Of, you know, what? I don't know if it's a Greek church, but it's over on Second Street. It was. It's. It's like oh. in the back. It used to be fantasy restaurant in the seventies. Oh, okay, Second Street. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm think I'm thinking of a different. Uh, I was thinking of a different uh, building. I was thinking of the the church. The church I was thinking of. I think it was on. Uh, it's on Hanover, or uh, one of those uh, Bridge Street or somewhere. Okay. Um, all right. Well, very good, Paul. Uh, while you're on the line, did you want to plug uh, tonight's Retro Spectrum Radio? Yes, but first, Christian, listen. Mm-hmm. You're an awesome DJ. I'm sure. Be the best you can in that DJ booth. And they'll throw everything at you. Trust mm-hmm. me. Okay? Yeah. Um, on Retro Spectrum Radio tonight, Matt, you and I and DJ Steve are going to be doing alphabetical chronological songs 
from 1957 to 1982. Yes, that will be fun. Do we have a guest? I thought we had a guest too. Yes, and we'll also be joined by uh, Scott Reiner. Yes, I remember meeting him before. Very good. Yes. Well, that will be fun. I always look forward to my Fridays here. Yes, and phone lines will be open for your contributions at 603-250-6007. Thanks. Have a good night. All right, Paul. Thank you. That's unusual. Paul doesn't always uh, open the phone line. Unless it's uh, somebody he really wants to talk to who calls. Mm. But uh, very good, very yeah, good. Yeah, no, I'm glad we got that uh, miscommunication because now, now in hindsight, I could have worded that a lot better. Eh, that's all right. You clarified it. Hey, but uh, I do I do take drinks for requests. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Vodka crayons, guys. Things did get a little contentious, though. I was going to play that. I, I was scared. I was like, no. I've never, I've never played this before. I, I hear it on the morning show all the time. I've never used it, but I was going to, I was going to play this. And suddenly things turned ugly. <laughs> I hear it all the time on the morning show. And well, I, that I, went zero to a hundred real quick. But uh, no, but that uh, I thought it ended on a positive note. It and did, uh, of yeah, of course, yeah, it's um, it, it, it's. Uh, do, do you have a lot of people who like pester you? Like, like they they come up. To I you have the times? regulars that pester me, and it's the most annoying thing. <laughs> and I'm like, you guys know I'm gonna play that, right? Right. Come on, yeah. Come on, it's nine oh five. I'm not playing "Get Low" by Flo Rida right now. <laughs> Okay, that that's not something you play at nine oh five. No, something you save. No, and I, I say that because I watched a DJ do it. Like that's a song you play at peak. Like uh, that's the song you get them if they're away from the dance floor. That's the song you play to get them back to the dance floor. Like what are you doing playing Get Low at nine oh five? Come on, <laughs> come on, come on. That's that's right. <laughs> Of course, of course. Uh, well, we are approaching the top of the hour. Yeah, so I've got to go. You've got to go. You've got to get to work over at the Y. The YMCA. Come the y- work out at the YMCA, guys. There you go. Do you, you get to see me. You like it there? You have a, it's cool. You having a good... Uh, it's yeah. cool. I have my first um, interaction with somebody who knows me from outside, and it was really awkward because he goes, he goes, hey, what's up, Rick? I'm like, huh? Huh? Oh. I was like, no one calls me that outside of, outside of 603. Oh. Well, every time you look at the window, I look too. Cause I'm like, why? What are you looking at? Did I look at the window? Yeah, I thought I th- you did. I think some. I think I do. Uh, I think I do it without Can realizing. Can you tell I have ADHD? Yeah, <laughs> I think. Uh, I think a lot of us do. Undiagnosed. That's exactly why I DJ. <laughs> Paul's in the chat room. He says, "Don't ask for tips there either, dude." <laughs> at the Y. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. Wait. All right, DJ Reckless. So before you go, you want to plug real quick tomorrow night? Saturday night, 603 Bar and Grill, 9 to 1. $5 Cheetos before 11. That's all I'm going to say. $5 Cheetos? Cheetos. Oh, I thought you said... Cheetos. I said, Cheetos. I thought you said Cheetos. I was like, what? This is the second <laughs> time you've done this. $5 Cheetos. Okay, so get get those vodka crayons. Yes. All right. I, I know I probably will. Y- yes. Well, good, good, good job. Here I am uh, talking about being sober, and like the minute I walk in a six hundred three and see vodka crayons, I'm just be like, <gasps> you "No, know, the key is moderation. Everything in moderation. Pace yourself. Everything everybody. in moderation, including Pace moderation. Yourself. Yes. All right, DJ Reckless. Thank you so much. All right, bye bye. We'll let you scoot. And uh, Reckless is uh, leaving us. He's got to get to work. Uh, don't forget to see him uh, tomorrow night at the six hundred three. And uh, if you want, to, if anyone wants to get in with a very quick call, you can. And then we're going to get to uh, Eric Pilcher's classic film review. This week, the subject is uh, Starship Troopers, but the phone line is open, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. I do want to say hello to everybody in the Facebook live chat quickly. Uh, Rocky Huber joins us in the chat, says, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about alcohol consumption and moderation and so forth. Uh, Rocky said, uh, you're a binge drinker like me, and uh, like we don't need it all the time, but when we do drink... Uh, we drink until the bottle's empty. Uh, Nancy Clayton joins us. Hi, Nancy. She says, I know this is really bad, alcoholic cliche, but I will say it anyway. I didn't have a drinking problem. I had a stopping problem. I, yeah, I, I have heard uh, people say that, yes. Um, Jenny, of course, is in the Facebook live chat and says, Shalom, peeps. Uh, Chris Rose joins us uh, also from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and says, good afternoon. Uh, Mike from Queen City Cabinetry, of course, uh, in the historic Sunbeam Mall, one of our great sponsors here at WMNH 95.3. And uh, Paul mentioned yesterday that next week, Mike is going to be in studio with us for Retro Spectrum Radio for the first time. So we really look forward to that. That will be very cool. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Eric Pilcher, of course, is in the Facebook live chat. We're going to hear his uh, this week's film review in a moment. Um, <laughs> uh, some comments, uh, some commentary on Easy G's call. <laughs> uh, Rocky Uber says, I think Easy G and DJ Reckless should have a boiler room match. Ooh, yes, that would be exciting. There's only been one of those in history that I know of, and that was, of course, uh, Mankind versus The Undertaker. I think that was the only boiler room match uh, that they ever had. Eric Pilcher says, Easy G is running from the Hulkster and Scott Robinson. Uh, Rocky Huber says, Easy G wins when he slams a turntable over Reckless's head. (laughs) Uh, Let's see here. Uh, there's a lot of love in the chat room. Uh, Gary uh, inspired a lot of love. Love is in the air. Very nice. Very nice. Let's see. I just want to make sure we don't miss anybody in here. Oh, Eric Pilcher says, uh, thank you. I think he was uh, thanking uh, someone for love. He says, uh, listening to Retrospectrum tonight, not going to youth service at church tonight. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you'll uh, you'll be listening. Wonderful. Uh, let's see. Infinity vein we mentioned in the chat room. Oh, our friend Stefan Philbrook is in the chat. Hi, Stefan. Stefan says the Coliseum was the S. Uh, they attracted tons of people, long lines, uh, referring to that uh, venue that used to be in, uh, I think that was the, the place Paul was talking about that had the three clubs in the building. Um, and Stefan said, uh, Pauly C, will you have your tip jar hanging out the window tonight? Ooh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Can we pool our tips, I, I wonder? Uh, Paul Paul says, uh, let me know when you're driving by and I will be waiting with an open jar. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Jenny says Cheetos is what I heard too. Yeah, I could have sworn he said free Cheetos, not free Tito's. I mean, I would go for free Cheetos, but uh, I'll take almost anything, any food item for free, as long as it's something delicious. Yes, I am that guy. I'm literally that guy. Uh, let's see. Michael Albert joins us in the Facebook live chat uh, and says, a lot of people have misguided ideas on what's acceptable or legal with regards to soliciting tips. Uh, Reckless has gone on a national tour. I give him props for being a professional DJ. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think we're all uh, very proud of him. I, I know Jenny and I are, are, you know, we see up close because he lives with us how hard he's worked. And he really has, you know, like he mentioned, he's he's done a lot of free shows you know trying to get to a point where he could get you know real money as as he's getting now and um no we're just very proud of him you know and he's tried a lot of different things which you should do when you're young you know you try some different things and different avenues career-wise and as you try to figure out what it is that you really want to do but um with the dj and i mean he really uh, went went all in and really committed which is uh which is very cool so yeah we're very proud of him uh, Michael Albert also said, I know a guy who does piano bar that requires a tip to play a request. Interesting. Of course, that's a little different vibe, the piano bar thing, but uh, yeah, yeah, makes sense, I think. Um, very good, very good. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get to uh, Eric's uh, classic film review. Like I said, this week the subject is the film uh, Starship Troopers. And I mentioned earlier, you know, I've never seen it. And I remember when it came out, I didn't really have much interest in it. But after hearing Eric's review, I do want to watch it. Um, So we're going to do that. And then we're going to show some love to our amazing sponsors. Uh, When we get uh, when we come back to I also want to talk a little bit about today is um, international. I want to make sure I get the name right, because it's called a couple of different things. But in the United States, we call it International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Uh, there are places where they call it something slightly different, but uh, most of uh, most countries that uh, commemorate it call it International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Um, so I, I want to talk about that a little more, talk about the rise in anti-Semitism that we've seen in the United States and, and other kinds of hate crimes, too, unfortunately. Um, so we'll, we'll touch on that, too. And then, of course, uh, uh, probably toward the end of the second hour, we'll be joined by Rob Azevedo as we get ready to transition into his program, uh, Granted State of Mind. Oh, Michael Albert says, uh, Matt, you would love Starship Troopers. It's the perfect satire of fascism. Yeah, see, I didn't realize that till I listened to Eric's review. I had no idea. I thought it was just a just a sci-fi movie with... Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't realize it. And, and if, if for any of you who didn't realize it, you'll know it after you hear Eric's review. And uh, Stefan Philbrook says, Starship Trooper, the song by Yes. No, 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 Stefan, we're talking about the movie. Okay. 
<laughs> Without further ado, let's get to that. Uh, here it is, of course, a uh, very popular segment on the show, Eric's Classic Film Reviews. And here it is, Eric Pilcher's Classic Film Review of the film Starship Troopers. <laughs> Young people from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part, too. <laughs> They're doing their part. Are you? Join the mobile infantry and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. The bugs send another meteor our way. But this time, we're ready. Planetary defenses are better than ever. Plendathu, source of the bug meteor attacks, orbits a twin star system whose brutal gravitational forces produce an unlimited supply of bug meteorites in the form of this asteroid belt. To ensure the safety of our solar system, Plendathu must be eliminated. We break net now and take you live to Plendathu, where the invasion has begun. serves as our entryway into the 23rd century. This look at the future is not quite dystopian, but it is militaristic, where the government is controlled by hardened veterans of war. When democracy and science brought the world to the brink of ruin, they took over. This leads to only those that serve being given the rights of a typical citizen through service in fighting an enemy that is unlike us, but is more dangerous than any we can imagine. Released in 1997 and directed by Paul Verhoeven, Starship Troopers tells the story of a group of high school seniors in the utopic city of Buenos Aires preparing for high school graduation. They are faced with decisions regarding their future, especially underachieving jock Johnny Rico played by Casper Van Dyne, who is born into an affluent family and decides to enlist. His friends Carl, played by Neil Patrick Harris, Dizzy, played by Dina Meyer, and girlfriend Carmen Abanez, played by Denise Richards, also enlist. And shortly after, they are thrust into war with the arachnids, insect-like aliens that only want to destroy humanity. In our next clip, the student's war veteran teacher and later commanding officer, Mr. Ratchek, played with hardened greatness by Michael Ironside, advises them on the fall that we previously discussed and tries to get them to understand the importance of serving. Then we hear Rico's civilian parents show disgust at him potentially deciding to go serve. Rico. Rico. Rico! Pay attention. Sorry, Mr. Ratchet. Let's sum up. This year we explored the failure of democracy, how the social scientists brought our world to the brink of chaos. We talked about the veterans, how they took control and imposed the stability that has lasted for generations since. You know these facts. But have I taught you anything of value this year? Hmm? You, why are only citizens allowed to vote? It's a reward. What the Federation gives you for doing federal service. No. No. Something given has no value. 
Look, when you vote, you are exercising political authority. You're using force. And force, my friends, is violence. The supreme authority from which all other authority is derived. Uh, my mother always said violence never solves anything. Really? I wonder what the city fathers of Hiroshima would say about that. You. They probably wouldn't say anything. Hiroshima was destroyed. Correct. Naked force has resolved more issues throughout history than any other factor. The contrary opinion, that violence never solves anything, is wishful thinking at its worst. People who forget that always pay. <laughs> Rico, what's the moral difference, if any, between a civilian and a citizen? A citizen accepts personal responsibility for the safety of the body politic, defending it with his life. A civilian does not. The exact words of the text. But do you understand it? Do you believe it? I don't know. Of course you don't. I doubt anyone here would recognize civic virtue if it reached up and bit you in the ass. And now, Rico and his parents. Who said you could grow up so fast? Huh? Mom, don't get mushy. This came for you today. I presume it's your request. A lot of my friends are doing federal service. Well, you're not thinking of applying. Have you lost your mind? I'd rather take ten lashes in public square than see you ruin your life. It's a term of service. It's not a career. I just want to get out on my own. See the galaxy for a couple of years. Johnny, people get killed in the federal service. Who gave you this idea? It's a teacher, isn't it? What's his name? You know the one I'm talking about. Mr. Ratchek. Radcheck? <laughs> Silly name. There should be a law against using a school as a recruiting station. No, Radcheck doesn't do that at all. He sort of discourages you. Well, that's good. Because you're going to Harvard, and that's the end of it. It's my decision, not yours. Well, is that how it is, huh? Wait, you two. Uh, Dad and I have a surprise for you that will settle this. Can you guess what it is? You want to see the galaxy? How about a trip to the Outer Rings? Zegama Beach. Huh? I've always wanted to go there. Good. Good. Then it's all settled. Verhoeven, much like his previous science fiction films, Robocop and Total Recall, uses over-the-top satire to address what he perceives to be as current flaws in society or even flaws that he foresees could be issues down the road. Here it is the vision of complete military control. In our next clip, we hear Carl, who is now in military science, explain why his friend Rico's unit was sent on a doomed mission. Although it is a very brief clip, I want you to hear the callousness in his voice and why they sent these soldiers on a mission that had almost no survival rate whatsoever. Officer on deck. Carry on. Burial detail. Dismissed. That is. How are you, Carl? Carmen, good. Johnny, I'm sorry it had to be your unit on P. That mission had a very low survival probability. The bugs laid a trap for us, didn't they? Elegant proof of intelligence, isn't it? I thought there might be a brain bug on P. You knew and you sent them anyway? We couldn't afford to launch an operation if there wasn't one. You don't approve? Well, too bad. We're in this for the species, boys and girls. It's simple numbers. They have more. And every day, I have to make decisions that send hundreds of people like you to their deaths. Didn't they tell you, Colonel? That's what the mobile infantry's good for. I hope you're ready for more. We're going back to P to capture that brain. The roughnecks are always ready, sir. I hear they need a new lieutenant. Want the job? I'll take it. Until I get killed or you find someone better. Earlier, 
I mentioned Verhoeven's two previous ventures into science fiction before this film. And while I do enjoy both of those films, personally, I feel this is the best of the three. I saw it in theaters upon it being released in November of 1997. And despite being a freshman in high school, I did not quite get the satire at play. Unfortunately, audiences didn't either. Critics used the depictions of violence and a perceived pro-military message to criticize and bash the film. It only made $121 million against a budget of $110 million. Nearly just a break-even film. Fortunately, the film has become a cult classic. It has spawned four straight-to-video sequels, an animated series in 1999, and several comic book series and video games. This film is an excellent example of satire being used in science fiction and being used well. It keeps the viewer fixated on the screen with action and amazing special effects. It has snappy dialogue, and once again, the satire just drives the film as being much more than a simplistic, mind-numbing popcorn flick. By the end of the film, it should make the viewer think on how much stock any government puts in their military and what the ramifications of doing just that would be. I cannot recommend this film enough. It is a great example of science fiction action at play and is a must-see. I hope you will join me next week with a quote-unquote double feature as we start a special series for Black History Month. On February 1st, we will look at a private investigator that ends up being hired to locate a local crime boss's kidnapped daughter. It is the 1971 film Shaft. Then, on February 3rd, we will take a look at a Harlem drug kingpin looking to go legit after one last major score. However, there are others on both sides of the law that want to stop him. That film is 1972's Superfly. For WMNH and Matt Connerton Unleashed, this has been a classic film review with Eric Filcher. down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry, located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. Clement Toes, Toes Pizzeria, family friendly, awesome for a date night. Clement Toes, Toes Pizzeria, for delivery call 603-782-8450. Clement Toes Pizzeria, the best pizza in town. 1875 South Willow Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Best cocktails around. Come in as friends and leave as family.
This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at cgibusinesssolutions.com. WMNH, rip the knob off. Welcome back. We are well in hour number two, Numero Dos of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com. For all of your live streaming options, uh, social media links, contact info, show archives, merch, and more. Uh, Today is Friday, January 27, 2023, and today happens to be International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and we'll get to that in a moment. But uh, if you missed it, by the way, we just heard Eric Pilcher's classic film review. Uh, This week, the subject is Starship Troopers, which I definitely want to see. I've I've never seen it. Mike uh, from Queen City Cabinetry, another one of our great sponsors here at WMNH, says, uh, thank you, Eric Pilcher. Another great review, and I will definitely put it on my watch list. Um, Also, speaking of sponsors, today, officially the grand reopening of the Hopknot. If you're watching online, you might see I've got my Hopknot shirt. haven't uh, worn this in a while, but uh, today is uh, the occasion. So the Hopknot is reopened. They've got some new ovens. They've kind of changed things things around. It's really cool. So uh, please uh, enjoy some delicious gourmet pretzels and the assortment of craft beer and uh, such a, as I always say, such a wonderful family that owns and operates it. And we're very fortunate Uh, to have that association with the Hopknot. Uh, If you'd like to join us on the program today, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text me at 617-917-4476. I'm on social media at Matt Connerton, or you can email me, matt at mattconnerton.com. Of course, you can interact and opine, as always, in the Facebook live chat. Uh, but the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603-250-6007. Uh, it is Friday, of course, and Friday is my favorite day of the week here at WMNH. It's a very busy day. Uh, of course, uh, we have this program, and then immediately after us is a Granite State of Mind, hosted by the great Rob Azevedo, uh, coming up at 6 p.m. And uh, Rob and his co-host, Polly Stone, they usually uh, pop in a little bit early, so we chit-chat, do a little changeover thing. So I always look forward to that and getting to see those guys and talk with them for a bit. Uh, So then we have Granite State of Mind. And then back tonight at 8 p.m., I will be back tonight, I should say, uh, well, for Retrospection Radio with Paul E.C. I have the honor and privilege of being one of Paul's co-hosts on that show, along with our friend DJ Steve. And this is what Paul had posted on social media for tonight. On Retrospectrum Radio, we're covering songs from A to Z. We'll play 26 song titles in alphabetical order, all from 26 years, 1957 through 1982. Uh, We'll also be joined by none other than Mr. Scott Reinhart, live in studio. Do join us. And, of course, you can listen online at WMNHradio.org and click Listen Live. And we also really like to have people in the Facebook live chat for that show, just like this show. We like to have a nice, busy chat room. We can hang out with you guys in the Facebook live chat. The only thing that we ask is, uh, please hang out with us in the chat room when you listen to that show. But 
open a second tab on your browser and listen to the show at WMNHradio.org. Reason being, Paul usually mutes the audio in the Facebook chat because there's a lot of copyrighted music and we end up getting booted and then we have to restart the feed and it's just easier. Keep one tab open in the Facebook live chat, hang out with us, chit chat while the songs are playing, but in the other tab, you can stream the audio uninterrupted and at better quality too at WMNHradio.org and click Listen Live. It could not be simpler, my friends. Uh, 603-250-6007 is the number. 603-250-6007. So I did mention uh, today is uh, International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Although, like I was saying earlier, it got a little confusing. I... I, um, when I was looking it up, because there's some there's some places I noticed uh, a couple of uh, uh, media outlets uh, like the BBC, for example, which is uh, pretty big and uh, uh, influential. They, for whatever reason, on the BBC they call it International Holocaust Memorial Day, or Sky News also they call it uh, they replace Remembrance with Memorial, but generally it's known as International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Um, this is from NPR. Uh, Second Gentleman uh, Emhoff uh, visits uh, Auschwitz, uh, part of uh, a push against anti-Semitism. Uh, you know, we have, of course, our uh, vice president's husband, uh, Doug Emhoff, is Jewish. And uh, so he's uh, he's over there visiting Auschwitz. I, we won't go through this whole story, but just quickly. And then I want to get into, uh, you know, talk a little bit about the rise of anti-Semitism that we've seen in this country over the years. But uh, recent years. Uh, but uh, And there's some news, too, that came out of the RNC meeting today regarding that. Uh, but this is from NPR. The International Holocaust Remembrance Day, uh, this International Holocaust Remembrance Day, government officials from various countries gathered at the site of Auschwitz uh, to remember victims and honor survivors. Among them, for the first time, was the first Jewish spouse of a U.S. president or vice president. Second gentleman Doug Emhoff is visiting Krakow uh, Krakow, Poland, uh, and Berlin, Germany, this week to promote both Holocaust awareness and the Biden administration's efforts to combat anti-Semitism. Uh, his trip will uh, include a stop at Schindler's factory. And of course, uh, uh, I'm sure most of you have seen uh, Schindler's list. If you haven't, uh, I absolutely uh, recommend it. Uh, a Shabbat dinner. With a local Jewish community, a meeting with a meeting with Ukrainian refugees, a roundtable with interfaith leaders, and visits to several museums and other historical sites. Uh, and it's more about listening and trading ideas than delivering any specific policies. Senior administration officials told reporters uh, on a Wednesday call. Emhoff, whose great grandparents fled persecution from modern day Poland in the early 19th century, has been at the forefront of the Biden administration's efforts to address growing anti-Semitism in recent months and in recent years, uh, I would add. Uh, An official said, quote, "Uh, the visit certainly has a special significance for him, for our administration, for American Jews, and frankly, Jews all around the world. And it's not lost on us uh, that it's a pretty incredible moment for him to return as an American Jew as the first second gentleman uh, and work on these issues, unquote. Um, I'm going to kind of skip down. Okay, uh, I want to get to this part, and then we have we have something else related to this. But uh, again, this is from the NPR article. Uh, it, it gets into some of the details about uh, the places that uh, uh, Emhoff is visiting, but I don't want to run out of time on this. Uh, this, this is important, so uh, let's get to this. Um, the Biden administration is concerned about social media's role. And this is something we've been talking about a lot over the years, the role of social media. And, you know, a lot of people do uh, say social media has contributed to the rise in anti-Semitism because it's easier than it ever has been uh, to disseminate uh, bad ideas and racist, homophobic, uh, Islamophobic, uh, transphobic, and, of course, anti-Semitic it's, it's easier than ever to recruit people into those modes of thinking or lack of thinking. 
So this is what it says here. Anti-Semitism is increasingly visible in the U.S. these days with high-profile figures in entertainment, like Kanye West, for example, sports and politics, publicly promoting tropes and conspiracy theories. And the number of recorded hateful incidents directed at Jewish people is on a steady climb. Over 85% of Americans believe at least one anti-Jewish trope, according to results of an anti-defamation league survey released earlier this month. 20% of Americans believe six or more such tropes, the highest level it has measured in decades. A senior administration official said, quote, modern technology and the Internet, with social media in particular, allows ideas to spread with unprecedented rapidity, unquote. Now, let me stop there for a moment because, and uh, I've talked about this uh, on the show before. I, I just, I notice. Well, years ago, I had a conversation. This was right after Charlottesville happened. And we all remember Charlottesville, of course, and the tragic death of Heather Heyer and, uh, you know, very fine people on both sides. We remember all of that, right? But I I remember having a conversation with, uh, you know, and some of the images we saw coming out of Charlottesville, like, uh, you know, people marching with tiki uh, torches, uh, chanting, the Jews will not replace us and all that. It's really frightening things to see out in the open in America. Not, you know, not, not under, you know, they're not wearing hoods. They're out in the open. They're proud of, of who they are and their, their hate. They're actually proud of it. They think it's a good thing. And it, and it's, it spreads like a, it's malignant, you know, and I use that term very deliberately. That's the problem with not confronting hate. But I remember having conversations with people, uh, people who, uh, a good friend of mine, very conservative who uh, I'll leave his name out of it, but, you know, he was very dismissive, saying that, well, look, uh, that's that's an outlier. Uh, you know, people are worried about the people with the tiki torches. People are worried about the KKK. You know, come on, just ignore them. Don't give them any oxygen. Just ignore them and they go away. They're just looking for attention. Don't give them any attention. And uh, And I think he sincerely, you know, the person I'm talking about, he's a good guy. I think he sincerely believed that. You know, he, he said, those people are idiots. And I think he meant it that they're idiots. He had no uh, common cause with them. But he said, just ignore them. That's it. And I've heard that from so many people over the years. Oh, just ignore them and they go away. They don't go away. And it's because of social media. The reason that you have things, see, my, my theory is without social media, Charlottesville doesn't even happen. That wouldn't have even happened without social media because social media allows you to say, hey, got this event coming up. We're going to carry some torture, uh, some uh, some tiki torches and and chant anti-Semitic slogans. Sounds like a great time. How about you join us? You put that out on social media. You recruit people into that. Next thing you know, you've got Charlottesville just as one example. And and social media allows you to spread all the hate, all the anti-Semitic tropes, all the conspiracy theories. And then you've got, you know, a large portion of the population that's maybe a little undereducated and maybe they've got some white grievance or whatever it is that goes on in these people's minds. And they go, oh, yeah, uh, uh, this makes sense to me. And then they uh, uh, they get wrapped up in all this hate. Uh, And it's uh, and by the way, I'm not saying I don't want anyone to take this wrong. I'm not saying I'm not against social media. I use social media in my career. Uh, And I think there are many, many wonderful things about social media. So this is not, I'm not doing some anti-social media rant, and I'm certainly not, I'm not one of these boomer types that goes, you know, I think think things were better when we didn't have the internet or when we didn't have social media. No, no, no. I love the internet. I love social media. I run an online business. My God. Uh, You know, uh, I don't know how I would promote this radio show without social media, all of it, right? So, but like any good thing, like any great thing that is so very valuable... It can be used for nefarious purposes, you know. Uh, that's just a fact. But but you have to confront it. So you can't, you know, I know there's people who, I mean, I've talked to people who aren't on social media who want nothing to do, it, do with it. You know, usually older people or maybe they they just don't have any interest in it. And, and, and they don't know. And, and some of them, I think, sincerely just genuinely don't know. They're like, well, why, what do you mean anti-Semitism is being spread? What are you talking about? Well, because there's this thing called social media where it's very easy to spread very bad ideas. And, uh, and that's, that's just the reality of it. And, uh, and we need to confront it because, see, you can't, 
Again, I use that word malignant very deliberately when I talk about hate. You can't just ignore it. I understand some people who say that, I think they genuinely mean well, but it doesn't work that way. Not anymore. You can't just ignore it. You can't just pretend those people are just, you know, they're just looking for attention. Just don't pay them any mind and they'll go away. Don't give them any oxygen. That doesn't work in the social media era. Michael Albert says, social media is like nuclear fission. It can be used for good or bad. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, far more for good, I think, right? Far more for good. But again, you know, any good thing, you can take it and do bad things with it. Um, so let's see. Um, I had, uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Okay, I found it. Uh, this is from thehill.com. This is from December of 2022. So this, actually, this article is from about five weeks ago, five or six weeks ago, so relatively recent. Uh, leaders warn social media is a ticking time bomb for anti-Semitism. It says here, U.S. Ambassador Deborah Lipstadt, uh, who is a special envoy to combat anti-Semitism on Tuesday called the rise of anti-Jewish tropes on the Internet and social media a ticking time bomb during a hearing held by the U.S. Helsinki Commission. Lipstadt's comments come just a day after President Biden's announcement that his administration would establish a task force to coordinate government efforts to address anti-Semitism and other forms of religious motivated bigotry, religiously motivated bigotry. Uh, her comments come... Uh, just a few weeks after rapper Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, delivered an anti-Semitic rant on InfoWars in which he stated he liked Adolf Hitler. And by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, he literally said that. That's not just a, a quick summation of, of his comments. Uh, that's not, uh, there's nothing hyperbolic about it. He literally uh, proclaimed his uh, love of Hitler. Uh, witness Rabbi Andrew Baker, much like Lipstadt, emphasized dangers of how easily anti-semitism can spread online during the hearing baker said quote today anti-semitism moves effortlessly around the world via the internet and social media it infects groups and individuals who then carry out attacks on jewish targets unquote there it is that's the the, the biggest problem here why you can't just ignore it why you can't just put your head in the sand and say, oh, just let the bigots go away. They'll die off, whatever, who cares? No, because it, it becomes actionable. The, the stats and the data are there for anyone to see. As hate rises on social media, as the anti-Semitism rises, what goes right up with it? Violence, hate crimes, anti-Semitic violence. Jewish people being attacked. Synagogues being attacked. It, it makes sense, right? You, you, you spread these ideas, you spread the hate, and that turns into action. And it's astonishing. It's astonishing how much this has increased across the United States. Actually, not just the United States, globally. I mean, if you look at the numbers, it's really shocking. Uh, it says here, uh, though Lipstadt said that it was important to recognize the dangers social media presents in making anti-Semitic content more easily accessible, she was cautious not to blame social media for the recent rise in anti-Semitism in the U.S. She said, quote, I'm not sure we have an internet or social media problem. We have an anti-Semitism problem. I like to talk about or compare social media to a knife. A knife in the hands of a murderous person uh, can take a life. A knife in the hands of a surgeon can save a life. Unquote. Yeah, and that's the point I was trying to make, although she uh, made it uh, much more uh, uh, eloquently and uh, articulately. Uh, Lipstadt also made clear during the hearing that she was not calling for more censorship or content moderation, but for more public condemnation of hate speech. Yes, that's the thing. You can't put your head in the sand and just wish it away. She said, quote, the United States will always uphold free protections of speech in our Constitution. But having said that, we also have to condemn hate speech. We cannot legislate it out of existence, but we can certainly condemn it. Freedom of expression doesn't mean we have to sit idly by, unquote. 
Baker also said that content moderation wouldn't be able to solve the problem of anti-Semitism spreading online. Quote, content moderators are no match for algorithms designed to push grievance as the basic business model. We must find new ways to bring this under control, unquote. Oh, uh, she also said, uh, we know that it spreads immediately exhaustively through social media, and that's the real fight that we're all up against, unquote. Lipstadt said one of the best ways to fight against the rise of anti-Semitism online and in general was for high-profile individuals to decry anti-Semitism whenever and wherever they see it. Quote, leaders have to speak out. Political leaders, religious leaders, celebrities, opinion makers, they have to speak out and say this is wrong, unquote. Yes. Um, uh, Michael Albert said in the uh, chat room, uh, social media platforms need to take more responsibility in policing content. Denying uh, a platform is not the same as restricting freedom of speech. Oh, absolutely. And that's a point I make all the time on the show, too. You know, uh, people, uh, they get their hands slapped by social media and then they go crying about, oh, my First Amendment rights are being violated. No, they are not. These social media companies, they have a right to platform or decline to platform whomever they want. Uh, It is not a violation of your free speech. A violation of your free speech would be if the government somehow suppressed your ability uh, to uh, speak freely. If, 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 say, you know, you went out and you said something, uh, and, and by the way, I mean, your First Amendment rights, you know, no rights are absolute. You can't incite violence, for example, but, uh, but if you were saying something, just not necessarily inciting violence, but just saying something hateful in public, and then somebody came and arrested you and locked you away in a cell and said, you can't say that anymore, that would be an infringement on your free speech. But uh, you not being able to post something uh, anti-Semitic uh, on, uh, on Facebook or YouTube or wherever, that is not an infringement. These companies have every right uh, to set standards, terms of service, etc. Uh, they are not always enforced correctly, uh, <laughs> clearly. And, and I've, I've had my own issues with YouTube where I've gotten dinged and penalized by them for uh, in, in cases doing the exact opposite of what I was actually doing, but um, or what they s- thought I was doing. Uh, Jenny said in the, says in the chat, most people who say that can't even articulate the rights protected in the First Amendment. That is true. Uh, something I did mention the RNC, by the way. Uh, the RNC, this popped up, actually. I saw this pop up during uh, Eric's uh, film review. This is from Mediaite. Uh, the, the big news uh, coming out of the RNC today, at least as I was on my way in to do the show, was that Ronna McDaniel has been reelected as the, uh, the uh, chairperson for the RNC. Uh, she's been there a while, it seems. I know there was some speculation she might be on her way out, but th- this is the other news that came out of this uh, that I just saw pop up a few minutes ago. RNC approves resolution condemning Kanye and Fuentes, remember Nick Fuentes, for anti-Semitism. But no mention of their dinner host, Trump. Uh, It says here, the Republican National Committee approved a resolution at their annual meeting uh, this afternoon condemning anti-Semitism, including specifically calling out Kanye West, now known as Ye, and Nick Fuentes, but made no mention of their infamous dinner meeting with former president and current 2024 Republican candidate Donald Trump. Well, of course not. They don't want to upset daddy. Uh, The RNC members are gathering in Dana Point, California to handle party business, including a contentious challenge to chair Ronna McDaniel's re-election. The resolution passed on a voice vote uh, the last day of the RNC, today, the last day of the RNC meeting, according to Fox News' Paul Steinhauser. It was filed by Sean Steele, a National Committee member from California and former chair of the state party, because, quote, he didn't want a handful of outspoken anti-Semitic voices to represent the entire GOP, unquote, according to Steinhauser's report. Uh, Politico had a more pointed quote from Steele condemning the uh, anti-Semitic commenters as nitwits. Whoa, boy, getting, getting salty. Call them nitwits. By the way, I, I, uh, just if, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna call them nitwits, don't even bother calling them anything. Seriously, I, I really I think that uh, when you 
when you're condemning someone for being hateful and fundamentally evil and you use a term that is so soft like nitwit, I think there's something that happens there psychologically where, well, actually, I know, what do I mean? I think there is. I know there is. It's obvious. There's something that happens there when, when you call them such a soft word, it, it's like you're not even condemning them or barely even criticizing them. And that has the effect of uh, sort of um, minimizing the harm that they do, the person receiving the the insult, right? You know, if you want to contend them for being uh, vile and evil and hateful and bigots and uh, unpatriotic and uh, all kinds of other things that you could call uh, people who spread anti-Semitic hate, uh, and, and you could even uh, call them things that I would not be allowed to uh, to uh, actually call them here on, on the show, things that I would like to say uh, about uh, people who spread hate because, you know, I want to be able to come back on Monday, but... Uh, I can think of uh, much more colorful things to call them, but when you call, oh, they're oh, they're they're nitwits, you know, uh, it would be like saying, oh, they're knuckleheads, or you know, oh, they're they're you know what, they're they're, they're just big dummies, you know, it it totally undercuts, you know, like why bother to criticize them at all if you're just gonna call them something that sounds almost playful and fun. Uh, it says here, uh, specifically named in the initial draft resolution were West Fuentes, Milo Yiannopoulos, and Democratic members of Congress, including Representatives Ilan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, over their own past comments and ties to anti-Semitic figures. Uh, Seal said, quote, I want to create a standard for all political parties in America that we don't tolerate bigotry, and in this particular case, anti-Semitism, unquote. The draft resolution, uh, revol- uh, ooh, I can't say that word, the draft resolution, uh, reviewed by Politico, would, quote, formally condemn, denounce, censure, and oppose all forms of bigotry, racism, ethnic prejudice, religious intolerance, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic statements, and any anti-Semitic elements that seek to infiltrate the Republican Party, unquote, and includes specific quotes from the various people mentioned in the resolution. Uh, in the resolution, which was reviewed by RNC attorneys, Seal writes that ye. Uh, who claims to be running for president in 2024 has repeatedly made shameful comments that are contrary to American and Republican principles. Among them, uh, we don't even need to uh, go through the things that he said. We we already know. Um, as both Politico and Fox News noted, Trump is not mentioned in the resolution, despite his role hosting a now infamous dinner meeting with Weston Fuentes at his residence at Mar-a-Lago last November. Weston Fuentes' outspoken anti-Semitism drew loud condemnation across the political aisle and led to Republicans who had previously promoted West backing off their support for the troubled rapper. Uh, according to Seal, 30 RNC members signed on to co-sponsor his resolution, more than the number required by party procedural rules to advance the matter. He was optimistic the resolution would pass, and it did indeed pass on a voice vote that afternoon. All right, so there you go. Uh, let's see. We have uh, Rob Azevedo has joined us uh, at the news desk. Hey, Matt, how are you? How are you? I'm good. Sorry for popping in. You sounded like you were deep into something right there. Oh, just, uh, yeah, well, you know, it is, uh, today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, so Uh I was talking a little bit about, uh, well, at the RNC today, they passed that resolution, and I was talking about the, uh, you know, social media and the role that uh, that plays and the the spread of Mm anti-Semitism and and how, um, you know, as as hate spreads, uh, so does uh, hate crimes and uh, violence. No growth in that area. there's been no, there's been growth in so many other areas of, uh, you know, civilization. Mm-hmm. That's we can't get our head around race, and we can't get our head around hating the Jewish people for some reason. I don't get it. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredibly uh, frustrating. Oh, uh, Jenny is calling in. Hey, Jenny. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. I just just to, to touch on on something that's really important to me because of what you're talking about is that this is very prevalently happening a lot in our area. Like, people hear anti-Semitism is going on or something, they don't think it's in their backyard, but it's very much in our backyard, and there's a very active neo-Nazi group that has been protesting here in New Hampshire, in Maine, in Massachusetts, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. They held banners that said 9-11 was done by Jews. Um and we we and they're out there in broad daylight. They march around and everything, and you rarely see a counter protest. You know, um, 
cops might try and keep everybody safe, but they can't stop them, obviously. Right. You don't hear about counter-protests going on in New England with these guys, and these guys have been getting more and more aggressive. They're more out there. They're, you know, they're in downtown Boston holding rallies. They were in Lewiston, Maine holding rallies, and they grow their numbers this way, too. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they tap into people and feed on fears and feed them anti-Semitic tropes, and they convince people that there were Israelis dancing on top of buildings when 9-11 happened and the buildings came down. Yeah. They believe this. They truly believe this. They believe that every Jew was warned to get out of the towers. Yep. They, this, this is I what know. they practice, this is what they preach, and they recruit, and they're doing it here in New England. And we need to stand up, all of us need to stand up to that, to, to shout it down, to say, no, not in our backyard, we don't want you. Or, or to you know, prevent, do what we can mm-hmm. to say something, because when we let them do this over and over again, and they hold these things over and over again, and we don't counter-protest, and we don't say a whole lot, we let them grow. We help them grow in our silence. Yep, absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. Well said. We got to. Uh, we got to. We, we got to begin to wrap up. All right, Jenny. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Bye. 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 All right. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. You got to. Like I was saying earlier, you can't. You can't just ignore it. it you, you have to confront it. Um, what is it that they don't like about the Jews? I don't get it. Well, this is all the conspiracy. All the this is all the conspiracy theories that go around. If you if you uh, if you talk to someone who's a hardcore conspiracy theorist, I'm sure you know people sure, like that. Sure. If you uh, you know a- ask them how they feel about Jewish people, <laughs> and you'll it it it, it all. It, I don't think I could spot a Jew if I was walking down Elm Street. I I I've never been wrapped up on any of that stuff. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. We, well, yeah, yeah. Normal people who don't uh, hate people yeah. who are different from us, we don't even think about it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, a Jewish person. Okay, is that like? I mean, spotting a Protestant. <laughs> you know, it's. I know it's. Uh, it's all very. Uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but it is. That's exactly hope, what it is. Hopefully, we can we can get past it someday. But uh, how did uh, Trump do in Salem? Real quick, is he there? Uh, he's there tonight, right? Oh, is that tonight? I think it's tonight. Oh, oh I'm not positive, but uh, he's down in Salem. I'm wondering how it, how the numbers are. I I have no clue, no clue. Well, the only thing I know is he wasn't uh, he wasn't doing a rally. He was uh, speaking at a Republican event, right? Which is everything's like a, a rally. And and Sununu was uh, declined. He Absolutely. declined to go. Absolutely, he's the best. Yeah, he's, I love him. He's a uh, he's a uh, he's not a never Trumper, obviously, but I think he's uh, not not any more Trumper. You know, <laughs> going he, forward, you know what he is? He he's um he's bigger. You know, he thinks he's better than Trump. You know, he's well, a better thinker. Yeah, he is better than Trump. Yeah, he is. He really <laughs> handled himself uh, really good around the primary time. Yeah. I see him on the Sunday morning shows, different. Uh, I, I really respect his game. I like it. Yeah, yeah. And, he really, and you can really tell, I'm sure he has aspirations and then uh, uh, like, oh, yeah. but aspirations for sure and who doesn't. Um, but uh, he really is good for the Granite State, you know? I mean, he's really got his back, you know, he, he's got his back for us. He's right. got our back, I should say. We uh, I, I want to. Uh, it's already. It's getting late, Rob. So we should uh, start. I'll to, tell uh, you right now, real transition. quick. Justin yeah. Cohen, speaking of Jews, I mean, I'm sure he is, and um, and he's on the show tonight. Really great musician. He was up in the barn, and uh, he did really great this. And so he's on this night tonight, and then after George Barber, who was just performed down the Stone Church Wednesday night, and of course Paulie Stone, uh, he's outside in the hall, and uh, Kyle Heavey, I saw her out there. Oh, very good. Very yeah, good. Very, very good. So that's coming up next. Uh, Rob Azevedo and his co-host, Polly Stone, and uh, a couple of, of musicians. And coming up next on Granite State of Mind right after this show. So stick around for that. And then, of course, tonight I'll be back for Retro Spectrum Radio mm-hmm. with Polly C. And if you miss any part of today's show, it will be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org and on my website, mattconnerton.com. All right, Rob, wonderful to see you. Thank you, Matt. And uh, we are going to wrap up, and uh, I will talk to you all a little bit later. Bye, everybody.